Hello guys, welcome to the first mundane vlog of 2021. Um, so this vlog is pretty much pretty much just going to be plant updates. So if you're not into the plant stuff, you can probably skip this one. Um, the reason why I'm going to just basically do a plant update video is because uh, I took January off where I did, oh God, I've got hair stuck to me. I did um, some content. It was sort of like, you know, the stuff I, I love doing and I don't want to miss doing for a month. So like, you know, purchases, um, project pants, stuff like that. But I pretty much took the month off to sort of recharge and reset, which, you know, it's good. It's good for the soul. Um, and I had quite a few people saying, plant update, we miss the plants. I know a lot of you guys, you love the plants. I know I also have some viewers who aren't into the plants, which is why I want to let you know this is pretty much a plant vlog. So if you're not into it, you can skip this one. Regular vlogging content is 100% going to be a thing this year. So if you do enjoy the vlogs and not, you know, all of the plant content, normal vlogs are coming. Don't worry. Don't worry. I got you. Love you guys. I do what makes everyone happy, including myself. So, um, when it comes to the plants, I, oh God, I'm so disappointed. I'm just looking at something that Freya did last night and I'm like, you naughty girl. Okay. So I've got some new plants, um, and I will take you through and show you. I can't really remember like what I've shown you, what I haven't shown you, but we'll fumble through it. It's fine. Last night, I've done a couple of things in my room. So one, you can see, yeah, 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 these guys. I've done that. I don't think I've shown you that. And over here in this mess, you might be able to see I've got some shelves up there with plants. Now, can you see, uh, see here, right, right here, these bits here? They're grow lights, which I screwed up there. Um, so I could support those lights in that little nook because it doesn't get good light in there. And last night, the Satan dog, the devil puppy, the little land shark, this girl, this beautiful looking, look at her. How can you, how can you possibly, how could she possibly do anything wrong? How, how did you do it? She chewed the extension cord that goes from those lights to the power plug. Naughty girl, trip the power, everything. And this is so bad. I'm like, thank God for safety switches. Um, and look, this is not the first time that I've experienced the beauty of a safety, like a power switch safety thing. Um, it tripped. So it's like, cut the power in the whole house. It's happened late at night. We didn't even know. Mum woke up this morning and all the power's off. So she's like, oh, something tripped the switch. Um, and then we've put two and two together. My information telling mum what Freya's done and mum telling me what she discovered this morning, put two and two together. And we're like, bloody hell, bloody fucking hell. So I, um, I need to work out a different way to have those lights set up. Um, I did not expect her to chew the power cord. I can tell you that much for free. Why did you chew it? You have 50,000 fucking toys. Yes, you do. Stop sticking your tongue out a little bit. Come here. Come here. Come here. She knows she's in the bad books. I showed it to her this morning and I was like, no. Definitely not very bad puppy. Come up here. Come on. I can't show you down there. My arms are too short. My arms are too short. You want to bite me. You want to bite me with your razor sharp teeth. Speaking of razor sharp teeth, we're like, we need to discuss what happened to my eyebrow. Let go. Leave it. Ow. Fuck. I'm covered in cuts and grazes and little tv peg damage it is what it is it's a puppy like what what can i say this is what i signed up for so i didn't sign up for this but it happened so you know we roll with the punches 
Okay, Freya has this thing where, for some ungodly reason, she gets really hyper at night. And um, she sort of, you know, she does the zoomies, she's barking, <laughs> she, which is really cute, which is why I laugh. It's not funny when it happens, it's not. We're like, holy crap, this dog, what's going on? Why is it 1am and she's going nutso? Um, but when she barks, it's so fucking cute. Um, so she goes crazy. She gets like really hyper because it's, it's happening late at night. Um, I was like, no, this is like, it's not on. And also we have to break this habit. So I'm like, right, it's bedtime. So we switch off all of the lights, make the house nice and dark, nice and quiet. I jump in bed and Freya within a few minutes, cause she's still like my shadow. She follows me everywhere. Um, she's come in and like tried to jump on the bed so i picked her up to put her on the bed and she's got really fucking excited and she's sort of like with her mouth open she's whipped her head around and like started licking my face so i pop her on the bed and like it hurt a bit because she's like booped me with her snoot basically she's like head butted me um and I've got slobber all over my face, so I put her on the bed and I, like, turn on the light. I go to, like, wipe my face and as I'm pulling my hand away, I can see that there's something on my hand. And when I look, I'm like, oh, that's not slobber, that's blood. So I check myself out in the mirror and I've got, like, a cut that goes from, like, here down to about here. And um, it's right along my brow line. And also it's like opened up an old scar that I have there. So I like split my eyebrow open in primary school and it's, yeah, she's like basically cut along there. So I think what's happened <clears throat> is her tooth has pretty much just sliced my brow open. I didn't even feel it when it happened. Like it, she head butted me. So that kind of hurt and it was with force, um, and I was tender for a few days. So, it, like, I am I was surprised she didn't give me a fucking black eye. It was, like, a full-on headbutt. Um, but the tooth is what the problem was. She's, like, sliced me with her tooth. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. It's... I think it... I'm going to take this tape off today. I think it'll be fine now. But um, I had to tape it up because it kept, like... It was a bit flappy bit open um and in the morning like I would wash my face and it would open up again so I'm like mm, okay tape it is for a few days uh, did you like that noise that I made did you like it did you what you doing you naughty are you naughty are you a bit naughty yes no no biting yeah, so yes, that is uh, what's ow, ow, no, good girl. <laughs> All right, I've got to get off the bed. She's she's gonna chew me. Um, so yes, that's that's what's happening. I've got a brow oopsie daisy, uh, courtesy of this little chiggy muffin. Yes, yes, you big yawn. <laughs> um. So yeah, I think I think let's let's get into some planty updates, shall we? Okay, let's start here in the window. So did I show you guys that I put moss poles on my monstera and my dragon's tail? I don't remember. Um but I did. Now with my dragon's tail, this is the newest leaf. Uh it's fenestrated. Yes. Thank God. Um, when I popped this on the the pole, I chopped it back um, because the leaves that were coming through weren't fenestrating. Um, and I know that these like to climb. When they mature and they can climb, that's when they start to do this fenestrating, which is where they get the like cuts in the leaves. So um, excellent. I've got that coming back. Um, and it does have multiple growth points, so I'm starting to, you know, train it, train it up the pole. Monstera also popped this on a pole. I've got 
um, two new leaves that have come through just in the last couple of days they're all like soft and floppy I love the feeling of um, leaves that haven't hardened off I suspect this is going to be quite a big leaf because it's quite big now um, but it's still got a lot of growing to do, which is exciting. Um, this one has taken to the moss pole really well. Let me see if I can show you uh, down here. You might be able to see this part here. That's an aerial root and it has grown into the moss pole. I will say, annoying thing about moss poles, they're really difficult to keep wet. Um, my ficus. My ficus is stunning. Um, Freya did... She did this, which I wasn't impressed about. She's also done this, which I'm not impressed about. Um, I have had to actually cut a couple of leaves off this guy because she initially liked to play with it. Now she's getting better. She doesn't touch it as much. Uh, my umbrella tree is doing really well. Um, it's putting out new growth, which is fantastic. I have my, uh, what is this called? Amazon queen. Is that right? Let me check the tag. Oh, the phone's ringing. No, no, thank you. Yes, Amazon Queen. Um, so it is putting out some new growth. This was a leaf I didn't know that it was putting out because it was sort of hidden. And this damage actually happened. The cat, I don't, what was she doing? I don't know. I woke up one morning and the cat was like sitting on the, not on this, but like on the cord of this, and she moved, got tangled in it. She like pulled it down. She ripped some of the plant, like, Mah! it was a whole thing. I don't know what she was doing, but she did it and it happened and it's fine. We forgive her because, you know, she's family and sometimes shit happens. Um, this is my fiddle leaf fig. It actually hasn't given me a leaf for quite a while now so it's sort of I assume it's like um doing something in the soil rather than up here because that's kind of the rule of thumb my black magic is actually doing really well so this kind of um it only had I think two leaves or had maybe three and one was always sort of on its way out uh, now has four leaves. It's adapting to that spot. I know it likes it. It could do definitely with more sun because although the leaves look quite black uh, in this light, they're not. Jesus Christ, that's beautiful. Um, they're not as black as they could be. So yeah, anyway, it's, it's pretty happy. Um, down here, I just have, you know, some like variegated chain of hearts. I've got uh, Medora. I put my repotted my little variegated ivy uh, because it just wasn't growing and I thought that's kind of cruel to keep it in a pot so that it can't get any bigger because it's quite pretty. Um, this is a begonia. I can't remember the name of it but holy shit it's beautiful. These patches here are iridescent so <laughs> yeah. Um Begonia maculata. Mum, uh, we were at Bunnings at some stage in January and they had giant ones and mum really, really wanted one, but she also had this one. So I took the small one. She kept the big one. I finally got myself a Croton because I just can't resist these. They're so beautiful. I don't I don't really know anything about these. I don't know how to get that sort of different colour variants um happening with it it's starting to like bud a new leaf so i'm just i'm gonna see what happens um my this is a uh, tinnicky ficus so it's basically this but a different version of it uh i recently repotted that this is my ficus lemon lime um which again it's this, just a different version of it that is growing really nicely. I have my Alocasia Bambino. I decided to pull some out of the cabinet and see, you know, how they do. This one's giving me a new leaf. It looks like it's going to be a big one too. So that's exciting. Um, uh, this, I think it's called... Oh, no, nah, I'm going to butcher it. It's like ir iridine... iridine. I don't know. Anyway, it's a variegated, like, colourful version of it, um, which is 
really cool. It's growing all right. It's a bit leggy though. So, you know, it is what it is. It's like the light here is just fucking shit. Um, I'm just putting it out there. Um, and this is my uh, begonia. I think it's a red robin, um, which is doing really nicely. To be fair, it probably needs a good like chop back to allow um, it to sort of really get nice and big. Uh, the hanging plants. So I just popped a curtain rod up there. She's all good. Um, what have I got? This is my one of my orchids. Um, I just put it up there because I can. It's not going to stay there. I'll find something else to eventually go there. This is a Piper Crocatum, which I got uh, not too long ago. It's not given me any new growth yet, um, and I just moved it to the window uh, last night. In here, you can't see it, but eee, there is a variegated chain of hearts. This is a Peperomia Lemon Lime, which is finally giving me new growth that I now have put it in the window. Um... This is, what is that? Has something eaten that? Because it's not a fucking fenestration, I know that much. Uh, this is a Cebu Blue, which is really, you know, doing its thing. Um, I feel like it's happy with the lighting here because it's not growing leggy, which is great. Um, I'm going to let that grow for a little bit longer and then chop it up and uh, propagate it so I can make that a bit more bushy. Uh, this is a... Uh, Monstera Silta Pecana. Uh, again, this is growing qu quite well here, not too leggy. Again, <laughs> I want to give it the chop and make it a bit more bushy. Uh, my Philodendron Micans is going well here. This was an oopsie daisy with a vacuum cleaner. Don't ask. I'm still upset about it. Um, but yeah, she's she's growing. She's a bit a bit odd because she was growing uh, somewhere else before I put her in a window and she grew odd. So, you know. Um, chain of turtles going strong and putting out a lot of new growth just recently and another variegated chain of hearts which is um, absolutely adoring the spot that it's in in this window. So, good stuff. Next we have Zicabnet and... This is a cheeky puppy. What are you waiting? What's that? What are you doing? Okay, what have I got? So up there, that's my ponytail palm. She's going good. I should repot that because I think the growth is stunted because it's the pot is just like tight. Uh, this is a uh, heartleaf philodendron, which is beautiful and growing nicely. Uh, this is a Skindapsis exotica, which is like just sort of starting to put out new growth for me. These these are strange. Um, they, I feel like they take a little while to adapt to new conditions and like put out new growth, but when they do, they're good. Uh, this guy, this guy here is a Calathea lancifolia, or they're also known as a rattlesnake plant. Um, this needs repotting as well. I feel like it's just a bit too uh, compact in its pot and it, it doesn't really have room to move. This is a Monstera Silta Pecana uh, Peru. No, Freya. Yeah, she really likes to get into this one. We have lost a couple of leaves down the bottom here, courtesy of Freya, which just means I need to give it the chop and uh, fatten up the pot a little bit. Oh, I'm walking into my desk. Very good. Up there is a variegated peace lily. I haven't been able to work out if it's a domino or a Jessica. Um, apparently, the way to tell is there's like, there's sort of textured lines. Oh, I'm dripping water. No, no, no. Don't drip water on the carpet. Uh, there's textured lines on the leaves um, and apparently that's how you tell i think i think it's a domino um and i it was sold to me as a domino so i'm i'm not too sure okay let's do the cabinet the cabinet i've got a lot of plants in here so ugh. i feel like if i go over them all in depth we're gonna be here for six thousand years but here's what's going on on the top shelf 
uh, interesting things. My Aglianema Pictum Tricolor gave me its uh, newest leaf while in my care and straight away started to put out a new growth point or not growth point but it's developing a new leaf uh, which is really exciting these are meant to be slow growers so I wasn't like worried about it and I could always see that the new growth was coming uh, but I didn't expect a new leaf and then a new leaf straight away my pothos mandula don't don't leave water on the leaves guys don't if you have one of these don't ever leave water on the leaves because that's what happens philodendron silver cloud this was giving me deformed growth um and has just recently put out this guy and you can see there's one that's like tucked in there but i dare not try and manipulate it to pull it out because i don't want to damage it um another one that's been giving me deformed growth is my philodendron melanochrysum uh this is in lecca i don't know if i want to keep this in lecca to be honest i've just been having troubles with it so its first leaf was tiny tiny little deformed thing which is not unusual because it was a cutting and it was shipped in the mail and then it was like given different growing conditions to what it had so fine second leaf also not great third leaf was stunning and then i the fourth leaf was this little nub and this is the fifth leaf so i don't know i don't know uh this is an alocasia uh poly which is starting to give me really nice big leaves this is the um the newest one so that's exciting here i have an alocasia guys <laughs> can you tell i love alocasia this is an alocasia longlobia which i've grown from a bulb i actually have two bulbs in there so there's one i can't really show you but um, how can i do this how can i do this so right there that is a bulb which is not quite pushed through yet but it's got roots this one I let it dry out totally my fault totally my fault but she should be fine she'll come back um this guy I can't remember what it's called but I won it in like a group lot auction um and it it's cool it's really like it's a beautiful beautiful plant and it grows little sugar crystals on it which is really interesting it's not actually sugar it just looks like sugar um, this is a, uh, uh, Alocasia Amazonica Dwarf, or is it a poly? I can't remember, but it kind of died back. And over the last few months, I've been like rehabbing it and it's put out two new growth points off the original bulb, which that's the bulb right there. Can't really see it. Um, so the new growth points are growing, but the bulbs not, but it doesn't matter because everything is alive. So it is what it is. Um, black velvet doing really well. Uh, this was something that I took off my, uh, Wentii, Alocasia Wentii, and I've just potted it up. I've got an Alocasia pink dragon, which I recently purchased. This has pink petioles. That's why it's called a pink dragon. Um, one of these is... Oh, I think, I think this one is an Alocasia Metallica. I think, I think, I can't remember. And one is something else, but I can't remember. So there's two there. My um, Monstera Albo Borgiana is back here. So it's it's got, it's developed a growth pattern, which is really cool. So it does a half moon leaf. That's its original one. Then it does like a splash leaf, like chunky splash leaf, then half moon, then chunky splash. <laughs> it's pretty cute actually, I like it. Um, I have my philodendron, um, oh my God, gigas back here, which I chopped back and has decided to put out two growth points instead of one. Um, dragon scale, doing well, absolute stunner back here. Uh, this is a Alocasia Lime Zinger, which I got early January or mid-ish January. Hasn't put out any new growth. I've got a Syngonium Fantasy that hates me here. 
This is an alocasia. Mm, look, this is interesting. Is it a green velvet or is it a fry deck? Because it, I bought it like this. I actually found this in a plant shop amongst a whole bunch of alocasia green velvets that were labeled fry deck. And look, if you're a fan of these plants, you probably know the controversy behind them. Uh, fry deck is a variegated version. A non-variegated version is just called a green velvet. Um, so this is the leaf that caught my eye and the reason why I purchased it, but it hasn't given me any, oh, well, it, there's like a spot right there, but does it count? Hell no. Um, so I'm just seeing where that goes. When I bought this, I, I don't know if I should tell you where I bought it because it was covered in spider mites. And also when this leaf came out, I also discovered it had mealybugs. So like I'm, I wouldn't, I wouldn't promote the, per, the place that I purchased it from, but also I don't want to talk shit about the place that I purchased it from. So hopefully you guys can understand what I'm saying. I'm just saying, if you buy a plant in a, a plant shop, um, check for bugs, check for bugs, because I find all of my plants that I've purchased in plant shops are the ones that come with the bugs, uh, and the ones that I purchase from private buyers, typically, you know, they know what they're doing, they love their plants, and they don't have bugs. Sometimes you get lucky and they have beneficial bugs on them, uh, which is great, because then they can spread amongst your own plants, and you don't have to Buy them. Um, okay, so this is my Monstera Stanleyana, which is growing strong. It's constantly giving me new growth. It's happy. I, it's just so, oh, what, what the hell happened there? No, I'm not. I'm not impressed with that. It's got wet at some stage because it's touching the Monstera Thai constellation. Uh, which is giving me out new growth, um, giving me new growth slowly, slowly. Um, leaves, plants do this thing where they like, you know, they pump out excess water and that would have been from resting in a little pool of water against that plant. Shame, shame. Uh, let's do this big girl. This is my Alocasia Zabrina that Kat gave me for my birthday, which is growing strong. I reckon with her next leaf, she will be too big for this cabinet and I'll have to take her out because uh, these lights will burn leaves. I'll show you some proof of that later. Um, did I say this is a Alocasia Caprio Red Secret? This is its newest leaf. This was the biggest one that it came to me with. It's going strong. It's very happy. Uh, this is a variegated elephant's ear. It's not very variegated. Um, this was, came to me, the bulb, like it died back. I rehabbed the bulb and here we are. Um, oh, my green velvet. Okay, let's just address this because this is literally the elephant in this section of the cabinet. Um, when I got it, so I left this on here because I knew I was going to do this update and I wanted to show you guys, but this leaf has to go. This was uh, one of the biggest leaves that it had on it when I received it and it's dying back because that's what they do. They uh, kill off old foliage to bring in new foliage. Um, so you can see how cute and little that is and this is the most recent leaf that it's given me. So you can see holy fuck i love this plant so much it is it's just stunning like it's oh i don't I, there's no words um and there's some smaller leaves these will all die back that's fine cryptantha back here which uh i thought was doing nothing and i was sort of playing with it the other day to see if it was sticking to the moss pole it's actually like de developing a massive root system so that's why I see no growth up here. It's because it's busy down here. Um, what have I got? Green Shield, uh, Alocasia Green Shield here. I have uh, an Alocasia, this is a Zebrina Tigrina. So these grow leaves, they're like this guy, the Zebrina, but this is a Tigrina. They have the same sort of petioles down there, which you can see they've got patterns on them. Oh, you're putting out a little baby. Cute. These grow longer and thinner. So um, the lobes up here will get really long and pointy and the leaves are long, skinny and pointy. 
And I also have another um, Syngonium Fantasy in here, which is growing strong and pretty happy. <laughs> it's a funny one. Um, it does like a splash leaf, a white leaf, a full green leaf, um, but it is really pretty, really pretty. Okay, next. Okay, this is my Alocasia Zebrina variegata. So this is my variegated Alocasia. Um, old leaves have been dying off, new leaves have been coming out. This is its newest leaf. Uh, the variegation is sort of diminishing on it, but I don't care. It's a beautiful, beautiful plant, nice big specimen. Um, and I took it out of the cabinet and it kind of freaked out and flopped all over the place. And I put it back in, but like you can see, it was getting burnt by the lights. So I had no choice but to take it out um, and it's adapted. So there she is. She's a beauty. I just have her in this thing because... I do. Okay, here we have more things. Um, let's talk about... Okay, this is a Anthurium that really fucking did not like coming into my care. Um, it just kind of freaked out, but it started putting out new growth, which is great. I'm expecting it to have like not great growth for a little while but it is what it is um this is like i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure it's potentially a fungal thing or over watering or something but i've been treating it and it's sort of slowed down so you know we're just whatever i'm waiting for that new growth to come out eventually i'll cut off those old leaves anyway but it's not the right time for it. Um, this is an Alocasia sarian, which is another one that I picked up recently. I love these cute, cute, cute leaves. And again, that is evidence of burning on the light. Uh, everything else is, you know, stuff. But this is going to be really long if I don't move on. Um, over here, I have a Philodendron White Princess, which I kind of hate. Um, I really hate the way these grow. This one doesn't have really nice variegation. It's kind of like, eh, whatevs. Um, but they grow like, I don't know. They grow like they don't know what they're doing and it kind of annoys me. Um, I have an Amidrium zipelianum here, which is super cool. It grows like little, it's like fingies. Um, and that is doing its thing. It's growing, it's pretty happy. Um, I like it. That's an avocado back there, which I recently took out of water and potted up and it's hating life. I may not keep it. Okay, the bookshelf, the bookshelf. All right, um, up the top, do I have anything exciting? Not really, that's another alocasia. Um, I've got my Tenanthe Grey Star back here, which needs to be repotted. It's just gone crazy. I repotted it not long ago. It grew big. Now it needs a cutback and repotting. Spider plant, which is doing cute little things where it like dangles down. I love it. Uh, that is another. Uh, this one is a variegated peace lily, but I think it might. That might be a Jessica. But I don't know yet. Don't know. Um, Neon Pothos. This was like a freebie that came with an order. And I wasn't, like, when I saw it, I was like, what is this crap? Um, but then I was looking closely at it. And, like, look at the, the hairs on the leaves. It's the hair that's purple. So it has this, like, purple halo underneath the leaves. Purple really pretty. That's a Syngonium uh, Three Kings, which I picked up and that's going strong. This is, um, I don't know actually, this is a bit of a mystery. So this is a uh, Scindaptus, Scindaptus Pictus. Uh, it was labeled as a silver satin, but I don't actually think that's like a variant of this plant. I think it might be an Exotica um, based on, well, this basically 
I, I think it's an exotica, but I'm not a professional, so fucking I don't know. Okay, let's look at the baby plants. Let me turn off this light so it's not super annoying. Um, Anthurium bebes. I've got them in here. They've been repotted into what will be their, you know, permanent home for a while. Uh, propagations in here. I have my... Um, Queen Anthurium, which is just like, whew, I'm very excited about how this baby is going. In here, um, I have another Cebu Blue cutting, which is the one that's just popping its leaf out at the back. That has been months and months and months in, not really, it's like two months in rehab, two and a half months maybe. And I also had um, another cutting, like a whole plant that I got in pretty much like completely died off and I chopped the shit out of it to see if I could um, propagate it and bring it back. I've got one back here that is growing. So actually it looks like there's two back there that are, oh yeah, that's exciting. Okay, cool. They're both putting out new growth, which is really exciting. Um, these are Anthurium seedlings that ooh, I think, so we've had a few hot days and they sort of suffered the wrath of heat and drying out. I'm seeing if I can bring them back. If I can't, it is what it is. Um, if I can, fucking great. Okay, this guy is uh, my Schifflera, which is a form of umbrella plant. I love it. I love it. It's kind of like fingery spiders. And I love it. I know that I don't like spiders and I don't like the idea of fingery spiders. That sounds fucked, but I love this plant. It's fabulous. And then we have this spot in here. Hi, me. Um, so they're not getting enough light. I'm really annoyed. New things. This is Sissus Discolor, which has just started to put out new growth far out. Those are little baby leaves are cute as buttons i have another syngonium fantasy here which is just struggling um this is an anthurium radicans which is actually really happy in this spot <gasps> oh disaster um it's doing really well in here and it's putting out new growth that is not like stunted or anything so i know this is a really good spot for it um yeah, that, that guy's doing well. Everything else, um, I'm sure you've seen before, there's like peperomias and um, this is, oh god, what is it? It's a form of ficus. It's a creeping ficus. Don't ever plant this shit in your garden unless you want it to fucking take over. Um, so I ended up with both of these free in other orders that I made. Um, and I just potted them up together. Like I had one in a pot and then I got this one. And I was like, well, I, I don't actually want them, but you know, what am I going to do with them? So I just potted them together. They can do their thing. They're in pots. They can't destroy the environment so well they can't <laughs> destroy the native plants um so yeah they stay in pots okay 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 we did something else i got a worm farm guys so my neighbor um has a worm farm and she's been really generous um giving us like uh worm juice for worms and we went ahead and got a worm farm because I want one basically there we go so that's the thing i feel like we need to move that that sun uh oh, it's still morning sun but it's a hot day <laughs> hello yeah we not spray your bum come on you want to get in the pool what Will she do it? Yeah. Go, go, get it. Get it. Yeah, good girl. Get it. Go. That's Yeah, good girl. Oh, you got the ball out. Loves the ball. Little wet pop. <laughs> Go!
Good girl. Drop it. Wait, wait, wait. She might. She might. She's thinking to bay out it. Give me the ball. You ready? Yeah. Good girl. <laughs> good girl. Oh, get the ring! Oh, yeah! The ring. the ring doesn't bounce. No, the ring doesn't bounce. The ring's good for putting treats in it. Good girl! You didn't have to swim. How was that? Was it good? Was that fun? Too hot for a walk, but we can have a, a pool party. Uh oh. They'll hurt if they bite. Hey, don't chase a butterfly. Oh, look how to... Uh, did you just nibble on the flower? <laughs> she hasn't mastered jumping no. yet. This will help me. Sometimes I forget that she's really, really young. It's because you're so big. It's, oh, it's a bite to my foot. You're tired. We'll get you. Oh. Yeah, she is. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. <laughs> she's so clumsy. <laughs> That's a pig. You yeah, don't get pigs. No. No pigs. Don't look no at washing. The yeah, don't look at the clothes. Come on. All right. Are we? Are we done? Oh fuck. I'll go to the room. Yeah. So we've had a little bit of a breakthrough with Freya. As you guys know, I mentioned she's having these like crazy evening things that resulted in the um, brow thing. Anyway, not last night, but the night before, um, I got a crate which we had in the garage out and I when she started to go like nutso and she wouldn't calm down it was like 1 30 in the morning um I put her in the crate and I left her in there she calmed down she like you know stopped being crazy she had a little cry and um I let her out again and I put her on the bed and she started to get hyper. So I was like, no, okay, you have to sleep in the crate. So I popped her in the crate. She had a bit of a cry, but she calmed down and she was fine. She slept in the crate, let her out in the morning. All was well with the world. Last night, she, um, when we sort of come into the room and it was like wind down time where I'm like turning off the light and getting into bed and all that stuff. She was a bit hyper, but she calmed down and, um, she, you know, stayed on the bed. She wasn't crazy, wasn't nutso, um, which was really good. I felt like we'd had sort of, like she understood if you don't be calm in the evening, you go in the crate. So that was all good. She didn't sleep in the crate last night because she didn't have to. And if she doesn't want to, then she doesn't have to if she's not being nuts, essentially. That's what we have it for. Anyway, I'm sort of like tidying up around the room. I was putting clothes away and trying to like organize this thing so I can fix the lighting. And I couldn't see where Freya was. And I was like, oh my God, what the fuck? Where, what? Hmm? Anyway, I look down, she's in the crate on her own. She's gone in there on her own. Um, so she's obviously not hating the crate. And then I was like, screw it, I'm going to reward this. So I just stunk, stunk, I just stuck some of the stinkiest sardine treats. They're like dried sardines in her Kong. Oh my God, she fucking loves them. She loves these stinky ass sardine things. They stink out the whole room. Like <laughs> my, my hands will smell like fish for days, which is dog mum problems. But um, she likes her crate. Very good girl. She went in on her own, which is fantastic. I thought she was going to be like, when she was really calm last night, I thought, fuck, I'm 
traumatized her. She's gonna hate the crate now. Um, but no, no, she's cool. Um, her breeder did actually recommend a crate for her and we've never crated any of our dogs. Um, we just didn't really feel like it's necessary, but I mean, if the dog is into it, then the dog is into it and I'm not going to um, not have a crate for her if she enjoys it. I think crate training is, I mean, it's great for, you know, if the dog ever needs to travel or anything like that, it's not traumatized being in a crate if it has to be. So there we go. Okay. Well, when you get big, we're going to have to get you a proper crate because that shit is only going to last you maybe a couple more months. Maybe if I'm lucky. She's so cute. I'm so proud of her. Stop growing. You're getting so big. What do you think, Pink? By the way, I don't just have rubbish sitting on my floor for the sake of it. The dog likes to play. It's one of her favorite toys. Water bottle with a bit of water in there. It's good. She likes it. Uh, but there is a sardine in that Kong and she's, she's trying to get it out. That Kong's going to be too small for her in a couple of months as well. But I couldn't get her a full size one because... She's too little for it. She'd stick her whole bloody head in a full-size one. What do you reckon? Crate's not too bad, huh? Not too bad? Not too bad? If she tried, she could get out of this. No problem, it's just mesh. But we don't tell her that. Oh, yes. Oh, almost. Oh, it's there, I can see it. Oh, you're gonna get it. Yes, you got it. Oh my God, they stink so bad. Oh my God, mom, that's so good. Oh God, she's gonna have the worst breath today, but she loves them, how can I say no? And they good for you. Okay guys, I'm gonna leave it at that. Oh, there goes Burb. Burb is, Burb's been a little bit quiet the last few days because he's, um, learning to mimic things related to Freya so um, he's been practicing barking uh, she doesn't bark often but um, when she does he will like pick up on that noise and he will focus on it and when he's practicing his mimics it's not as loud as this this is just a like attention call um, but when he practices mimics, he does it um, very quietly and he repeats it over and over and over and over for like ages, half an hour, sometimes over an hour. So it's very cute. He's also um, learning to mimic from me, no and leave it because <laughs> he hears it so often. And also um, any squeaky toy noises because Freya loves her squeaky toys. Burb loves squeaky toy noises. So it's it's super cute. It's kind of, it's funny. It's, it's funny to uh, live amongst this craziness, but there we go. Um, what else? Oh, Freya has a play date this afternoon. I was tossing up, not wrapping this vlog up until I had footage of that, but I'm not gonna have time to um, like edit the vlog and do all of the work necessary to get it up for tomorrow. She also has her first puppy class tomorrow. It was meant to be last week, but was canceled because of the lockdown. Um, and what else? And I need to get ready for ballet, which starts in an hour and 15 minutes. So I have an hour and 15 minutes to get myself ready and wrap up this vlog, do all of the work necessary. So lucky I spent time yesterday editing the majority of it, what you've seen up to this point. So well done me, very good. Um, yeah, so that's it. I will get some footage um, of like, Freya's first puppy class and um, her play date this afternoon because uh, she's growing so quick and I'm really interested to see the comparison between her and Charlie now. Um, I have like photos of her and Charlie so 
I kind of, I'm keen to take another photo to see just how much she has grown because I feel like every time I blink, she's growing and it's, oh God, she's going to be a big dog, but also, why you grow so fast? You be baby forever. Oh my God, no. Could you imagine? <gasps> No one would ever own a dog if uh, they were puppies forever because there's moments where it's very, very difficult. Um, but anyway, <laughs> there's that. So, yeah, that'll be in the next vlog, won't it? Won't it? And we might try and go to the beach sometime soon as well. And we need to get you more toys because you just... Uh -uh, no, no, I know. Stop it. Don't take my Invisalign. Oh my God. Okay. I got to go because she wants my attention and uh, she's not going to stop getting into things until I give it to her. So thanks so much for tuning in guys. I hope you enjoyed the first vlog back for 2021. Oh, there's something else I want to do. Um, oh, look, I'll talk about it in the next vlog because if I get into it, We'll be here forever and I need to do some work. So thank you. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.